Unit 2.4, Poisson's Ratio. The course outcome we've been focused on in this unit is to demonstrate an understanding of the stress-strain behavior of materials and the ability to extract information from the stress-strain curve. The lesson outcome is to apply Poisson's Ratio to solve for lateral strains. Let's begin by considering an axial member and it has an initial length of L0 and we're going to apply an axial load of magnitude P. That is our axial force. And what do we expect to happen to the length of this member? Well, we expect that it's going to get longer. And we can call that the deflection, or the elongation of the member, and we will give it the symbol delta L. That's the change in length. And previously, we used this equation to solve for strain in a member. It is the normal strain is equal to the change in length over original length. And you've noticed the subscript I've placed on normal strain that we haven't seen before. It is L-O-N-G. That stands for longitudinal normal strain. The longitudinal normal strain is just the strain that occurs in the direction of the force. We can rewrite this equation to solve for the elongation, or the change in length. And that is equal to the longitudinal strain times the original length. Now, let's review. The longitudinal direction is the direction that is parallel to the force. The direction perpendicular to that is the lateral direction. And this is going to be important to us in our discussion on Poisson's ratio. Let's think about what happens to the lateral direction of this member when we apply an axial load. The force applied is a tension force. It is stretching the member. So the member's length in the direction of the force increases, or the member gets longer. What happens to the lateral dimension? Because our member is getting longer, the strain in the longitudinal direction is positive. But what about the lateral direction? As the member stretches, the lateral dimension decreases. It becomes narrower. So our lateral strain is negative. You can see these are opposite of each other. What happens when we reverse the forces? Here, the member is feeling a compression force. What happens to its length? It gets shorter. So our longitudinal strain is negative. What about our lateral strain? Well, the lateral dimension becomes wider. So our lateral strain is positive. With this in mind, we can define Poisson's ratio. Poisson's ratio is a material property which relates the longitudinal strain to the lateral strain. And it is shown as this. This is the Greek letter nu. And it is the symbol for Poisson's ratio. And it is equal to negative the ratio of the lateral strain over the longitudinal strain. The negative sign is there because lateral strain is always the opposite direction of longitudinal strain. In tables of mechanical properties of materials, you will always find Poisson's ratio with the symbol nu. And you can see for values uh, for metals that in tables of mechanical properties of materials, you can typically find Poisson's ratio. Looking at the values for Poisson's ratios for metals, you see that Poisson's ratio is typically around 0 0.3. It can be lower for ceramics, for example. Concrete here has a much lower Poisson's ratio. And we're done.